Hey guys, welcome back to Field Notes. It's January, and throughout much of the United States, there's not a lot of herp activity going on this month. Uh, but here in the coastal plain of the southeast, we actually have quite a few species that are active. And uh, right now, I can hear in the distance uh, pretty loud frog choruses, and that's what we're going to focus on tonight. So go ahead and join me tonight as I go looking for one of my favorite coastal plain frog species, the ornate chorus frog. All right, so hopefully you can hear this chorus behind me. Um, right now it's mostly dominated by spring peepers and southern chorus frogs, but there are some ornate chorus frogs mixed in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play you a clip uh, that I took a couple weeks ago of just ornate chorus frogs, a good chorus so you can uh, really tell what they sound like. Uh, they kind of give this metallic tink. There's some starting up right here. Uh, it's like one note metallic tink that they repeat over and over and over again. It differs from the spring peeper which is more of a, a peep and then uh, your southern chorus frogs are an ascending series of notes that almost sound like you're running your finger slowly across a plastic comb. So go ahead and check out the calls real quick uh, and then we'll go look for some frogs. Ornate chorus frogs are our largest chorus frog species here in the southeast, um, and compared to all of our frogs, they are one of the most striking animals. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, they come in three main color phases. You have a gray phase, you have a green phase, and then you have a, a reddish brown phase. And in all those phases, you have uh, you have some individual variation as well. But those are the three main colors you'll see. And now. In addition to those colors, they'll often have a dark triangle between their eyes on the top of their head or some bars going down their back. Um, they've got bright yellow on the inside of their legs and then a very dark or even jet black mask that runs through their eyes. Um, very, very pretty. One of the prettiest frogs in the country. So right here we have our first ornate horse frog of the night. As you can see it's a reddish brown individual. Real pretty frog. See that dark mask. And he is clinging to a little blade of grass. Now this is how they often sit when they're calling. The males will cling to sometimes a single piece of grass or they'll they'll sit in a clump. They're usually in the water when they're calling. Just look at that, it's a fantastic looking frog. You may be wondering just why these frogs are active so early in the season. And that largely has to do with our seasonal rainfall. These frogs occur in a pine savanna habitat such as Sand Hill or Pine Flatwoods. And what they're utilizing uh, this time of year are ephemeral wetlands. Wetlands that dry up seasonally um, and often are um, dominated by grassy vegetation and there's also no fish. And so as soon as we start getting winter rain that fill up these uh, seasonal wetlands, these frogs move in and they waste no time. Um, males start calling, advertising to females and breeding um, quickly starts happening. And it's a race against the clock for those eggs and those tadpoles uh, because these wetlands will start drying up um, once we get into late spring. Um, so they want to get an early jump as soon as the rainfalls hit and so their tadpoles have a, uh, a good chance of metamorphing uh, before the wetlands dry. Throughout much of the eastern U.S., uh, spring peepers are typically the first frog to start calling in the late winter or spring and the first one to start breeding. But down here in the coastal plain, 
the ornate chorus frogs usually have them beat. Down here in Georgia, I typically start hearing them about mid-December, um, and then they call sometimes um, throughout uh, the month of February and into March. And here we've got our first green face. Look at that. That's a stunning frog. Bright green, some really nice dark markings down the back. That mask. Gorgeous. Here's another really pretty red one. Man, I just can't get over how beautiful these frogs are. Now, where I'm at right now in South Central Georgia, uh, these frogs are actually pretty common. Um, a lot of sand hill in this area. Population still hanging on. Some of them are really robust. And uh, these wetlands that they're using are real grassy, and uh, some of them are wetlands where you can still find tiger salamanders and gopher frogs. Now, um, throughout their range, these ornate chorus frogs are not doing quite as well, especially like in North Carolina. Their populations seem to have really declined. And it's for many of the same reasons that you lose species such as gopher frogs and tiger salamanders. It's destruction of these ephemeral wetlands, um, lack of burning on the landscape, and just habitat degradation over time. All right, now finally we have got a gray phase. A really pretty one at that, almost silvery. Uh, really clean, dark markings on its body. A nice mask. Um, beautiful little frog. As you guys can see, these frogs are just stunning and they come in quite the array of colors. Um, this is a time of the year that I always look forward to. Uh, always waiting um, every December to, to hear these frogs calling in the wild um, so I can spend a couple nights out here just soaking it up. Soaking it up. Um, really, really special animals. Thank <laughs> you.